Are you tired of the typical libraries with conventional music that makes you feel mad? Introducing Lyrics.com, the music website made for and by minds like you. Our team are lifelong musicians and producers in love with music. Search the Lyrics music catalogs and find music with guaranteed originality. Mark the difference with music of signature at lyrics.com. say what do you say of this riff in this intro what about it amazing actual rock this is this is fantastic we have michael millions from the band sita here with us this is their music hi hi michael how's it going i'm going i'm doing pretty good man how are you fantastic really glad to have you the song is the picture and what are you, you know, best things that you tell us about it so Tell us about it. Yeah, so this this kind of came about. It was very funny. Um, it was very funny and organic process in which this kind of uh, came to fruition. It really started with, uh, and it, it doesn't usually happen with this. The band typically rehearses in the same room and writes stuff collaboratively. Um, and I mean, it was a very collaborative effort, as all songs are. But this one particularly, I just took a guitar into my back room at my house and just started playing three chords, and then I just song probably the most simple melody I could possibly write over it and it just came out and initially I wasn't even comfortable with the song and the melody itself I was like I don't think it's good enough and I brought it to the guys and they were like dude no that's banging let's let's make something of it and they kind of just built on it and built on it and built on it until it became what it is absolutely no yeah really you know I I've seen these many many times so ready and um, it's so true sometimes the simplest structure in chords and you throw in a fantastic melody and like this case and it has punch it has good rhythm that's all you need right and sometimes it's not about the idea but the execution too and um you know you can tell from from how you sound your band sounds um you know the expertise you really really proficient musician so why don't you Tell us about that, for how long you've been playing and practicing, and uh, also the rest of your band. Yeah, man, thank you for that. Um, we appreciate the kind words, and it's really, it, it's it's kind of a, a we, we caught lightning in a bottle with getting this lineup together. It was uh, It's a group of guys from the local New Orleans area um, that have really been playing all their lives, and uh, myself included, I've been playing music since I was five years old, and I started the band with uh, with guitarist and singer Brad Keller. Uh, who sings Smoke on the Hardly Alive album as well. Um, and we started the band when we were about 15, but it took about three years before we really got this lineup in. Our bass player, Dylan Calluet, was playing with a bunch of people around town, and he's well-renowned around town. as one of the better bass players. And and uh, Bradford Lewis, our lead guitarist, and Kai Malance on our drummer, um, both just very, very proficient musicians. Bradford has been playing on Bourbon Street, uh, actually, since with his parents uh, since he was since he was little and uh, so everybody's kind of had a, a, a toe in this in the music thing and and some of us in the music business from a very early age and I think we're very blessed to have that um, sort of predisposition and uh, and I think it kind of we struck lightning in a bottle but I think it came together for for a reason and um, and I think it shows in the music it definitely shows um, interested is incredible and you can tell you know these are lifelong musicians where you did you have any uh leg on when 
you know, to, to help you get started? Like um, did your parents or, for example, like being into music or did you have instruments around the house, something like that? Yeah, actually, my dad is uh, my dad's been a professional musician his whole life. He plays the trombone and he sings as well. And he writes he writes music. He um, his name's Mark Mullins and he plays. He actually toured with Harry Connick Jr. for about 16 years. And um, and then he's been touring with yeah, he's been touring with a bunch of other projects and his own project called Bonorama. It's a trombone front of New Orleans rock band. It's very, very cool. Uh, but so having that around the house and around me my entire childhood, It kind of felt natural. I remember being in the fourth grade and being like, "Why am I not in band yet?" You know what I mean? Like I just, and then they were like, "What do you want to play?" And I was like, "What do you mean, like trombone? Like it's pretty, uh, you know." It was it was never really a question to me my whole life. So um, coming about was, I, I think it, this all to this point has felt the most natural it can be, and that's all you can ask for. Fantastic. So the song, the picture. This is included in your latest LP, Hardly Alive. Hardly Alive. So tell us a little bit That's of correct. the, tell us a little bit of the influences. Um, you know the process in, in uh, into making these this album, or your connections, or how you know was it complicated? Was it easy? Tell us a little bit of you know how did this record, Hardly Alive come about yeah man and i appreciate that question um it was a fun process i'll say uh to begin but uh it's all thanks to obviously you know the band of guys behind me and and uh jack mealy for dad jack mealy productions who really made this album uh come to fruition the way we wanted to see it um kind of kind of come about you know it was like all those songs <clears throat> before jack had gotten his hands on them sounded very different and um and most of them at least and it wasn't until we got in the studio and started kind of uh you know pulling <clears throat> pulling things and, and and trying out new stuff that uh, all of this stuff kind of fell into place the way we the way we wanted it to and it was we didn't know what to expect at first because we'd never worked with jack before but um but getting in there and just being you know very communicative like jack was very Um, I like to say egoless, which is, is something that we look for when we're working with people because it's never about it's never about us, it's about the music, you know. And I think a lot of bands kind of um, a lot of a lot of a lot of bands I think maybe pass that up, pass that mentality up, which is um, which is unfortunate. But it's all about really getting it right, and uh, you know, top to bottom, we spent two years crafting this album, so it was. It was never like a. None of the tracks are throwaway tracks. You know, that's something I don't. I don't really love when I hear people say, "Is like, oh, that's just a throwaway track." It's like, no, I should never. You should never really do that. You know, you make music for a reason. It's the best job in the world. So I was just going to say that basically, <laughs> it's we we kind of felt like we were sitting on the songs for a long time. Uh, but that, you know, when it came to time to record, we were like, okay, there's a reason we've been sitting on this. There's a reason we've been crafting and nitpicking and making sure everything was perfect. But um, that's just part of what we do. From the moment you started, right, and start practicing until the moment that you started recording, t tell me about that. Were you playing live? Were you just practicing and composing in the studio? T tell me about it. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so it definitely, like you said, it definitely has a lot to do with our live experience. And we have... You know, we have countless numbers of live shows a year, and that's kind of how we like to keep it. We're a very, we're a very live band. We're very bred on the energy of a crowd and the energy of people reciprocating the music. Because, at least for me, anyway, I know I can speak on this for myself. It's it's, it's always been about that. It's always been about can I reach people? You know, it's it's. It's easy to get swept up in the ego thing when you see 5,000 people screaming and, and, and cheering for you, but it's always been about what can be reciprocated, what's the energy here, and, and ever since we started playing shows in the city, um, that sort of idea, that sort of energy is wrapped up in the music, and every single song we would write. Um, kind of, we want to capture that, you know. It's like, and a lot of a lot of the times, I know, for instance, the the title track of the album, Hardly Alive. It was, it, it was bred as a like crowd song. It's like oh, the crowd would love to hear something like this. You know, we wanted to write something like that, and um, 
I, I'll definitely say that we have had songs before that we, excuse me, that we um, that we've just put on stage as a trial and seeing how it goes in front of a crowd and then the response that we get from said crowd changes the song completely and for the better but um that's that's a huge part of the way we make our music but from from beginning of the writing process to studio um it's a lot of backroom writing it's a lot of collaborative efforts and rehearsals but the live experience is totally a part of it incredible um in detail how how does the crowd change the song? Can you give us some examples? A, yeah, yeah, that's a great question as well. So I'll I'll say that one of the tracks on the album, the white particularly, uh, that's one we took when we played at the Hangout in Gulf Shores, and um, and I, to be honest with you, I can't even remember how the first version of the song sounded because we've played it so many times since then, but. Um, but it was originally that B section that you'll hear on the on the track. It goes to the relative minor, and uh, and it's got this rhythmic kind of syncopated feel, and um, that just wasn't there to begin with. It was a very straightforward like rock kind of thing, and we were playing it in front of the crowd, and the whole crowd was jumping the whole time we were playing the song until we got to that B section, and we were like, okay, we gotta we gotta figure something out there. <laughs> it nice. Didn't quite, it didn't quite get as received as well. So um, it's just stuff like that, you know. You see how people pay attention to your stuff, and you see how they're receiving it. And uh, it's the kind of thing is it's like you build a trust with the audience. It's like when you when they trust that you you know you're doing it for it's about the experience. They know you're about the experience, and you know that they're about the experience. You trust what they're giving you. So when they give you you know the love and adoration, or the 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 uh, they're they're showing you the appreciation for the music, you want to chase that. Absolutely. It's important for 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 a band, for for a musician and a songwriter to uh, be like you said before, to be egoless in a way, to listen to to other opinions, to to the reception right. the reception of your of your art, right, and and react to right. it. And I think that. Something you probably lost. I want to segue this with, with um, true live bands uh, from uh, from the grassroots, from like yourselves, like the the ones that we are beginning to receive plenty from from New Orleans, from all that area. I wanted to ask you about that. Do you feel like there's a movement? Do you think that there's a rock, uh, a true grassroots type of real band growing in this area? And what's your opinion? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question as well, man. Um, I will say New Orleans is very different uh, than most major uh, popular hubs of, of, of popular music nowadays. And uh, for good reason, I think. And I'll say, you know, I'm a, I'm a fan personally of a lot of pop, popular music that people probably wouldn't expect me to be a, a fan of. I, I love Harry Styles. I love Ariana Grande, you know, but but of course, my heart and soul is with Led Zeppelin, Black Crows, ACDC and such. But it's um, yeah, I'll say I'll say first off, I, I respect all, all, all forms of music and I love all forms of music. But there is a certain uh, there's a certain kind of niche to that grassroots uh, sort of organic Type of creation that you're talking about, and I think a lot of it does happen in New Orleans, and I think a lot of it um, that we kind of latch on to is because we are from New Orleans, and you just see, you know, you could walk down Frenchman Street and see seven killer bands that will blow your mind that are just bass, drums, guitar, organ, or whatever, you know, and it's like real instruments. It's just, it's just people who love to do what they do, and have this urge to to create out of just like improvisational inspiration and just just get together and create something magical after whoever they don't even have to have ever played together and i think that's some of the magic of having that grassroots aspect to the music is you know you could do a lot of that improvisational stuff as well and we do you know because at least me my my background is actually in jazz training i'm 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 trained i went to a high school conservatory for for jazz trombone so And then our guitarist, Brad Bird, he's, he's just great. He knows all of the theory stuff on guitar. His dad was a guitarist, and he, he put him through the rigor. I mean, like, 
all the guys are into that kind of thing and they have an ear for it. They have a knack for it. And, um, and that's a huge part of, um, the grassroots thing for sure. But that's just New Orleans music in general. And I think it's starting to bleed into the rest of the country as well, because, um, you know, we, you think about Nashville, you think about Austin, you think about a lot of like Atlanta, you think about a lot of major music hubs and we've played, um, we've played with people from those areas uh, recently and we're seeing, you know, we're like, wow, this is a, uh, this, this sort of feeling is definitely growing. It's certainly expanding and it's certainly becoming enhanced. It's getting better because all of these musicians are getting better and they're doing this, this thing that's, that's really magical, even better than it's ever been done before. Fantastic. I mean, it's, it's incredible. So all of you just mentioned, you can see, Any night that you go out and you can see like seven bands that will blow blow your mind, uh, where do you see the opportunity? Like, do you see there's still space even these days? And if you couldn't fail, well, how would you like that opportunity to be for for yourself and your band? That's a that's a cool question as well. I I think if we couldn't fail, uh, <laughs> if we couldn't fail, we probably would never leave New Orleans. Um, but in the event that the industry, at least in, in the United States, is, is just kind of, um, shifting wildly and, um, it's been expedited the past two years. I think that cities like Nashville, uh, Houston, Austin, and Atlanta, uh, are, are some particularly Southern cities that are just creating this, this great niche for organic music. And, um, at least for what we do new orleans is a great breeding ground but it's 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 not necessarily our final destination you know we see we, we see ourselves going to nashville we see ourselves going to austin potentially um for a short while or a long while you know we, we still haven't really seen it yet but we we have a couple of shows lined up in those locations this year that we're very excited for so we're going to kind of see where that where that takes us and um We have a friend of ours, Leilani Kilgore, who we play with, and she's from Nashville. We've been discussing a lot of ideas with her, and um, so there's there's a lot of opportunities on the books, uh, thankfully. But I think if you're asking in terms of like a short term, you know, where do we see the band? I would say uh, the ideal goal is is definitely just touring and and writing. And uh, it sounds vague, but I mean touring in in the sense of And playing four or five nights a week in, in different cities, you know, it doesn't even, we don't care about, you know, is it, is it arenas, is it stadiums? We just care about, is there, are there people who are going to receive this stuff and, and, and be moved by it, be touched by it and, uh, and share, share a great, you know, cathartic experience with us. And, and the fact that we can do that for people is an honor. It truly is. But doing that across the country and in different locations is really the dream. So, Um, mainly touring, but of course, you know, you always want to be writing and creating stuff that people can latch on to and people can connect with um, and people can identify with, uh, especially as well. Um, but yeah, so I mean, it, within two or three years, I'd say I see us, I see us, you know, I maybe not, maybe not moving locations yet. Uh, maybe, I don't know, you know, it's kind, it's kind of an open ended thing, but, but definitely, definitely touring and uh, as much as we can. And, uh, definitely writing as much as we can and even tapping into our roots as I think we're kind of doing now. Uh, you know, when we started, it was more of a, it was more of a straight up rock thing. It had a little bit of a modern twist to it. It, it was a little bit of, um, it was a little bit of uh, Foo Fighters and, and, and Greta Van Fleet and a lot of the modern rock bands that we kind of hear. That was our first project. And then as we progress, I think we get um, closer to our, our older school Southern roots Um, it's where we kind of bred our music you know I always say like one of the bands that we bond on is, is Zeppelin and it's just like a home base for us like no matter what we do we always have that that's always a bonding point you know all of us are just huge Zepp heads and um, mm -hmm. bands like them Black Crows and Aerosmith and even current bands like Blackberry Smoke and Tedeschi Trucks band they, they really inspire us to do what we do and I think that sort of style is kind of a uh, where we're finding our niche. So uh, short term and in the future, definitely see that's where we, that's where we would fit. But the Southern rock and roll vibe is, uh, that's, that's the, that's the, what we like to call the Zeta magic. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, that cathartic experience, it could very well be the goal itself. Could you define that yeah. 
like, would you define the feeling of playing in oh, front feeling, of others? Yeah. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, I will say this, um, back to the ego thing, you know, it is, it, it's really, it's a matter of, I mean, it depends on the person, but it, it's, a, it's a matter of really finding the fine line between, is, is, am I making this about me or am I making this about them? And that is what it's all about. The feeling is amazing. You know, it's a rush, of course. You, you're playing for uh, even a couple hundred to a couple thousand people, even to, even to 50 people, if they're into what you're doing. is um, it's, it's the greatest job in the world, like I said, but it's a feeling like no other. Um, and the fine line is like, a great a great New Orleans musician once told me this and I'll never forget it um, his name was Fred LeBlanc or his name is Fred LeBlanc uh, and he plays with a band called Cowboy Mouth you've probably have heard of them and um, he, he told me one time we opened for them a couple months back um, in town and and they had been touring for a while so it was cool to see them so I wanted to catch up with them after our set so I went backstage and Fred, the lead singer and drummer, was back there, and he was like, "Look, man, you guys are fantastic." And he tells me, "He's like, man, you got, you got a lot going for you, but you got a lot to learn. And uh, I want, I want you to remember always that it's not about you; it's about them." And uh, I think ever since I heard that come out of his mouth, the approach to the stage has changed for me, and uh, and for the better, uh, because it's just, it, it just feels like a better experience when you know that it's not. It also takes weight off your shoulders, you know, and you know it's not all about you. You're kind of working to create this experience for these people that are coming to see you, but they're they're coming to see what you do. You know, it's 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 a it's a pretty it's it's gratifying, it's electrifying, it's it's a high in a lot of senses. Mm -hmm. um, but it's again the best thing that you could you could ever ask for being a musician. Uh, and this is not a popular opinion amongst music, or I guess it is, but it's not every musician that will tell you this. But uh, that's what it's all about, is being in front of people and, and seeing those people, you know, latch on to what you're doing. And, and knowing that you're being, uh, you're connecting with people is, is the biggest thing. The connection. It, and, um, and how did it change? Do you, can you identify the way that you feel that you change your, your approach? Yeah, I, that's a great question. I, I think... At least for me, it was a matter of um, it was a matter of like a lot of things. Not taking yourself too seriously, you know, knowing that it's not the end of the world. But like every every single time you get on stage is not the end of the world. But um, but most importantly, I think you have to know what your audience is going to be receptive to, and you have to know um, you have to know what's going to excuse me. You have to know what resonates with people the best. And once you're in that experience, it's not—it's not necessarily like amending your art to fit the narrative, to fit a, to fit a mass appeal. You know, uh, it's not necessarily sacrificial, but it's more—it's more of a—it's more of a. You see what the people are doing, and uh, and you see what the people are responding to, and you kind of you ch you kind of chase. You know, at least for me, even playing with other bands, I play on Bourbon Street Weekly, and it, it's just a cover band deal. But you get in front of. A bunch of people and you get with this great band that you're playing with and it's like that's that's the perfect blank canvas to create some sort of experience that's just uh, kind of otherworldly for everybody in the room and that's really what it's all about so when you're it, it's it's a mentality to answer your question directly is like the mentality changes from okay how can i be the best front man how can i be the best lead singer how can i look the best how can i x y and z it changes from that to How can I make this experience the best experience it could be for every individual mm. in the room? Yep, it makes sense. It makes absolute sense. Wow, this is fantastic. You definitely, definitely have a lot of talent and, um, you know, wonderful person to, to discuss. And, you know, you know what you're doing. Um, you know, I can just wish you for the best. And... Um, And in the meantime, you know, if you had an advice for somebody who, who, who could see you like a role model that wants to, to get into music seriously, um, what would that be? Oh, that's probably the best question of the day. Um, let's see. I guess it's to know, it's to know what you're truly about. 
and um, and to never never stray from what truly feels good to you. You know, don't ever don't ever worry. Uh, don't ever worry if you have deniers. Don't ever worry if you have um, naysayers. Don't ever worry if some people don't like what you do. Not all the people are ever going to like what you do. Um, you can't please everybody, you know. So it, it's it's a um, it's a battle doing this thing, but it's it's the most rewarding job in the world for sure. So I'd say um, always stay true to yourself. As you know, cliche as it sounds, everybody gets it all the time. But it's it's like um, it, it's it's you just never want to stray from what you feel is right, and uh, you'll get. I fell into this trap as well, you know, uh, and I've only done this for, uh, I'm only 21, but I've, I've already fell into the trap multiple times of like, you know, people telling you kind of who to be and uh, you don't, you don't want to get caught up in that. Just st stay true to yourself. Um, be, be perseverant, you know, and trust in the process. Uh, it's, it's, it's somebody, somebody out there is for you and you are for somebody out there. Fantastic. Really you know, I agree 100%. And these really, these are really wise words. Um, okay, so Michael Millins uh, from Sida, and the song is the picture from the LP Hardly Alive. And thank you, really, thank you so much for sharing a little bit of your time. Uh, this was fantastic. Dude, thank you so much, Antoine. I appreciate you having me, and thank you guys for doing what you do, being the alternative to alternative rock. I love the message, and I love the vibe, y'all. Y'all keep it up. I appreciate it. Thank you, and until next time, and we are going to enjoy a little bit more of the picture. libraries with conventional music that makes you feel meh. Introducing Lyrics.com, the music website made for and by minds like you. Our team are lifelong musicians and producers in love with music. Search the Lyrics music catalogs and find the music with guaranteed originality. Mark the difference with music of signature at Lyrics.com.